Hi, uh, I'm Anusha Agnor from PQI, and you're watching our PQI Profiles, a show in which we get to know our members. So today I'm joined by Olivia Lanes, uh, who is from Physics Department at Pitt. She is currently a fourth year PhD student working with Professor Michael Hattridge in the area of quantum physics. So Olivia, welcome to our program. Uh, firstly, congratulations on winning PQI Poster Award at Science in 2017. Thank you. Uh, so tell us about yourself, uh, where you grew up, and a little more about your background. Yeah, so um, I grew up in Southbury, Connecticut. Uh, I went to a typical public school, and then I went to Dickinson College for my uh, bachelor's degree. And I always knew I wanted to, to major in physics, but I also studied astronomy because I thought I was going to be an astronomer for a really long time. Okay. Uh, and that obviously did not happen. Um, and so, yeah, I did that in four years. I did a lot of research while I was there, and I realized I really, really liked quantum mechanics, and I wanted to pursue it further, and so I came here to do my PhD. Oh, okay, good. Um, so when did you first hear about poster awards, and how did you get involved in creating your entry to this poster awards at PQI? Well, PQI advertises pretty heavily for all the right. events that they do, so it's hard not to hear about them. Um, and. Jeremy Levy is on my thesis committee, actually. Okay. So he was the one who really kind of pushed for me to do a poster last fall. So uh, yeah, it was no problem. I just collected the data that the stuff I've been working on, pushed it into a poster, and mm -hmm. there you go. OK. Uh, so can you talk more about your research and what actually motivated you to take up quantum physics? Yeah, so uh, my research is in a subject called quantum information. Um, and I would say basically the broad goal of this field is to end up eventually building a universal quantum computer, um, which is obviously something that does not exist yet. And we're sort of working hand in hand, but also you know competing a little bit with big companies like Google and Intel and IBM, uh, all working towards the same goal. And a quantum computer, I think, will basically change how we do everything. Okay. Everything will be in a different in a different level, more technologically advanced. Uh, different fields will just be completely redone by this advancement in technology. Um, but what, pers what wanted me to pursue it was uh, basically just the idea that we could use quantum mechanics, um, something that's so abstract and weird and hard to think about for something physically applicable right. in real life. Right. And the idea that I could take something that did not exist in you know an observable state until one measures it, and we can take that crazy idea and okay. do real calculations with it blew my mind. So I okay. knew I had to study so, it further. It really sounds interesting to me. Um, so are there any challenges that you faced in your research or like probably in your PhD? <laughs> what is not a challenge? Everything is a challenge, yeah. Um, so my research is really building from the ground up. So we build qubits, uh, which is a quantum bit in-house in the lab using a, a pretty sophisticated fabrication technique, which is a big challenge. Okay. Um, not killing qubits is a challenge, uh, making sure they're at the same frequency that we want, basically putting them in the fridge in such a way that we can efficiently measure them. This is all pretty large experimental challenges, but that's what makes it fun. So what did you hope to achieve when you decided to enter into the poster awards, and what are you actually hoping to do next? Yeah, so I uh, was really hoping to win the travel award to go to the APS, the American Physical Society Conference, okay. uh, just a few weeks ago in LA. Okay. So I did do that, um, and I was able to present the research that I had been doing on building um, quantum limited amplifiers, okay. which is how we actually read out qubit signals. And uh, yeah, I was able to present that, and it was tons of fun. Okay, that sounds really fun. <laughs> Um, so do you have any role models while growing up? I mean, it could be a high school, be it undergrad, or probably even in grad school right now. Yeah, so what made me originally want to study physics um, was probably the fact that my father gave me a video set of Cosmos DVDs when I was a kid. Okay. Which, I don't know if you're familiar with Carl Sagan, but... Uh, right he hosted this TV series that I just thought was the coolest thing that I had ever been exposed to. And he mostly talked about astrophysics and astronomy, okay. but he also talked about, you know, how people think about the universe. Okay. And I knew that's what I had to do. So Carl Sagan was my role model, and he still is, even though he is 
podcast. Okay. So what do you like about Pitt? I mean, what made you come to Pitt to do your PhD? And is there anything that you would like to talk about Pittsburgh as a city in general? Sure. Yeah, Pittsburgh is a great city. And the University of Pittsburgh, I think, really supplies its researchers with the infrastructure and the money, basically, that we need to accomplish these really hard experimental tasks. And I so appreciate that I work in this brand new clean lab. You know, everything uh, still works. Nothing is rusting, falling apart, like at some older labs. Anything that we need, we basically have access to. Okay. So the, the department and the school itself is really, I think, invested in research, especially at this time, which okay. makes it as easy to be a researcher as possible. So how has your experience been at physics department at Pitt? Like, you know, you do have anything to talk about physics department in general. I mean, not just about your research and your professor, but uh, how uh, how did the uh, department support you, you know, throughout your journey as a mm -hmm. PhD student? The department, I think, has been very supportive. I mean, coming in uh, as a graduate student, I had never done a master's or anything mm -hmm. like that. I was coming straight from undergrad, so I was right. very young. Um, and they were incredibly supportive of me pursuing the exact type of research I wanted to. Um, we had TA requirements, which were pretty overwhelming, especially the first year when you're taking courses and you have to pass qualifying exams and stuff like that. Right. But I've always felt like the, the professors and the, especially the people in charge, like the graduate student reps, have always been behind their students 100%. So something I think you need when you're right. an incoming so young graduate student. So was it overwhelming student. for you in the beginning? As it was overwhelming like, for me. Okay. Yeah, I felt like most people um, were older than me. They were more experienced than me. Right. I went to a very small college. Dickinson, I mm -hmm. think, only has like 2,500 people. Okay. We didn't have as many physics classes as big universities because how could they? So I think that a lot of people had more experience coming into it than I did. Okay. I was very insecure and self-conscious right. about this. Um, but Pitt made it easy, not easy, but it made it possible right. to catch up. Right, good. Um, so do you have any hobbies? Like, what do you do in your free time? <laughs> what do I do for fun in yeah. my copious free time? Um, I like to be outside. Mm -hmm. I like to run. I like to play with my dog. Okay. I have a dog, so she takes up most of my time. Okay. Um, yeah, running, biking, jogging. I play a little piano, so... Good. You know, like to so hang out with my friends, you know. I think you do a lot of recreational activities. Yeah, so. if I can leave the lab and right. go outside, I will. <laughs> right. So where do you see yourself few years down the lane? Like, do you want to be associated with academia or do you, are you trying to escalate into industry? So what's your plan? My plan is to apply to everything that is in this field, okay. postdocs or industry positions. Okay. I just want to be doing quantum information. Okay. And yeah, I want to, you know, hopefully be compensated okay. for, for doing that work. Um, but it doesn't strongly matter to me at this point, whether that's industry, IBM, Google, or a different postdoc position. I just want to keep doing this field of research. This okay. is where I see myself. Okay. So what's your experience with PQI? PQI has been great. Having it here, I think it was a huge selling point for me for even coming to this university because mm -hmm. it said to me, you know, Pittsburgh actually really cares about this field of research that I knew I wanted to pursue, right. um, both financially and with the personnel that can back that up and be there for you to answer your questions about physics and non-physics. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, PQI is great. I have nothing but good things to say about uh, PQI and Jeremy. So for how long have you been associated with PQI? Mm, I guess since I started working with Michael. So that okay. would be the summer after my first year. So it's been like three years. Almost yeah, three years. Yeah, almost three years at okay. this point. <laughs> um, so lastly, like, do you, I mean, what advice would you give to students who would like to apply for poster awards at PQI? Mm, don't wait until the last minute. Okay. <laughs> that would probably be my recommendation. Okay. Um, I think it's helpful if you, it doesn't necessarily have to be the project that you're working on uh, day in and day out that you present at the PQI conference mm -hmm. or the poster sessions. It should be the one that can tell the best story, you know? Right. The one that should make people who don't do quantum information want to come over to you and ask you, right. you know, what the heck is a quantum computer? What are you doing with your life? 
Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be the thing that you are focusing on every single day.